I said, hey, Paul, you got this downhill run. And I saw Paul look at me, and then I saw him take off, and he said, hey, I'm going to H4 so I can see underneath us. I was like, copy. So I started focusing on this drainage right down here and really watching to see what was going on down there. Saw a little bit of fire that I knew was on this side on the slope. Called Paul, said, hey, Paul, I can see fire on our side. Paul said, yeah, it's down below us. We'd taken and pulled the crew off the slop over, got them onto the ridge so that we could fire this last piece from the lookout point down through the saddle and off to H4. Uh, by now, uh, the squad boss that's with me is starting to put fire and tossing stuff off over the edge to start burning out everything out on the point and using a rocky chute that's right down here in the bottom as a blocker to keep it from coming this way and just trying to get rid of all the stuff that's out there on that face and then back around on the other side a little bit as far as to the line. So right in that time, I don't know how it lined up, but right around that time, I was made, able to make contact with, with Plumas and Lassen. Um, the, the only thing that sticks in my mind about, hey, let's go ahead and have you guys head up the hill. Uh, Jack uh, from Plumas said, hey, we've got about 20 minutes to, to wrap this up. And I said, 20 minutes is 20 minutes, Jack. Go ahead and start heading up the hills. And so I called uh, the superintendent for Augusta, a good, good friend. A uh, long-time peer and, and hotshot from the southwest that I knew well said, "Hey, uh, I've got Plumas and Lassen heading up the hill. Uh, where where are you guys?" And I'm thinking, "Where are they on the slope?" Because Plumas and Lassen were the easiest to get up and out at this point. And I was thinking, I, "Well, I was trying to get Augusta up the same way." And uh, Mike asked, "Well, what's Flag doing?" And, and I said, "Well, Flag's gonna to burn." And he said, "We're gonna stay in support. Flag's burn." Um, and that's right at essentially the same time when the two medics as they were lumbering all this is going on simultaneously and two individuals that we thought were were from the structure protection group turned out to be the division echo medics yeah right at that time when those two showed up up on top right behind them as i figured out who they were i was a little upset there was a lot of good stuff going on you shouldn't be here but i can't send you back up the line because you had already had your folks time the we escape time. routes back yeah. up and i knew there was no way based on some previous day issues of, of fitness and medics and, and ultimately me carrying medic packs. There was no way I was gonna risk sending them back up. I knew the hotshots had plenty of time, but I wasn't so sure about them, especially uh, their fire experience. And so uh, the safety officer showed up and I said, I essentially looked at both of those, those medics and I said, you two stick with him. Jim, these two are yours, go down to the hella spot and whatever he does or he tells you to do, you do. So resources that were still on the hill, Plumas and Lassen were out, confirmed that all of the structure protection group was out. So what remained on uh, this division at the time uh, was Augusta, Flagstaff, myself, the two hell attack that were uh, flown into H4 that morning. Um, and then shortly after everything started uh, Picking up in intensity, we had the two medics show up. Immediately following the two medics uh, was Jim Derrick, the safety officer. And then I believe right about that same time, uh, uh, Jason and Joe Julian, the superintendent from Mount Taylor showed up. I told Paul, you know, hey, I can see fire on this side of, on this side of the drainage, you know, it, no doubt. And he said, okay, get ready, get ready to burn the hand line. So I left my lookout spot. I walked out to the hand line, had two crew members there, said, get those torches ready. Looked down the line and all the crew was listening to the radios. They could all hear the radios that were dispersed through the crew. And they had already started to make the move to the other side to get ready to hold. I was never able to make contact with Plumas and Lassen to find out whether they were going to go up the hill or come down the hill or their exact location. And so, since I was unable to do that, made the determination that we couldn't burn the line, not knowing where people were at, and then just told the crew, to, told Todd to bring everybody down to H4. So we were ready, and uh, Paul said, hey, don't burn, come, come down to the H4. So told those guys to put the torches down, uh, turn and look, the crew was beginning to move down the line. 
I started moving down behind him, met last in soup coming up, you know, and he said, hey, don't go to H4. H4 is not going to be a place to go. And uh, I said, well, you know, we're committed. We're going, we're going to H4. Uh, continued on down the slope, got just a little bit below the top of the knob um, and watched the fire curl right over the top of crew boss trainee, you know, and crew turned around, come back. I called Paul on the radio. I said, hey, we just got cut off by fire. And he said, okay. The crew was going past me. I walked down into the saddle, you know, and, and I was like, man, you know, we're standing right in a saddle. This is, it's going to hit us right here. This, this is going to be it. And uh, told the crew, hey, drop your gear if you need to. Stuff fell off, you know. They continued up the line. I turned around and started following them. Uh, got up, I don't know, maybe 100 feet below where the slop over hand line ties into the main hand line. Paul came out in the saddle, said, hey, bring everybody around to the trail. I said, I don't know where the trail's at, Paul. We're already committed to going to the Aspen stand. He said, okay, go ahead and go to the Aspen stand. When the crew got cut off coming over the top and started back and I called him and told him to come to the trail. Uh, and that was a mistake that had been carried on all through the line construction as the line comes up and over this knob and then drops straight off to H4 back in the saddle 20 feet off to the east is a force system trail that walks around the knob and right into H4. Several of us throughout the day used it to not have to scale up and down this thing but we never identified it for everybody we never flagged it and even though it was only about 20 feet or a little bit more from the hand line over to the trail we never did actually cut it identify it we allowed people to walk up and stumble down off the hill throughout the entire shift. That would have been identified. We could have moved people around and back into H4. So really got to think about, even though it was very obvious to me that the trail went through and obvious to several other people, a lot of people never even saw it or even thought about it tying in. And so even though it's obvious, you need to make sure and t let everybody know. Uh, so I'm cutting up, I'm, I'm doing a little cross corner from the main hand line up to the, uh, the slop over hand line. And the brush was probably about shoulder high, maybe a little bit higher, you know, I'm just sort of brush whacking through there following what I saw the crew do. And uh, walked up on a hand mic, you know, and I was like, man, you know, what, what's this doing here? And uh, just sort of pulled it out of the brush and I could see the cord was all stretched out and real tight. So I just started pulling out of the brush as I was going, you know, I'm still looking over my left shoulder because I can hear a lot of fire down there, you know, and just, sort of trying to get get up to the hand line and uh, just walked right out on the crew boss trainee. You know, and he was down in the dirt and, uh, he, you know, it was just sort of looked like he was just staring up at the sky. You know, I said, hey, you know, what are you doing? Just need you to get up. You know, we, we got to get out of here. This isn't going to be a good spot. And uh, didn't get any response from him. You know, and I, I sort of bent over him, you know, and I was, I was pretty much yelling at him. I was like, hey, man, you need to get up now. Now's the time. You know, we got to get up go can't stay here and just didn't get any response from him you know and so I started taking his pack off you know and, and got his radio off of him and that kind of stuff you know and was trying to get him to move you know and he just he, he just wasn't responsive at all you know 